Hi everyone, here today we are going to talk about pizza. I am very sure most of you clicked on this video because you thought it is a video on pizza, but it is actually not. It is about pizza which is actually going to benefit you for your education in the future. So Vijay, hi. Yeah. So what is pizza? Uh, it's an exam that is conducted by OECD every three years and it tells you how the education system is doing across the world. It's not to compare the countries. People generally think says, oh, Singapore is doing really well, China is very good. And that's the first thing you want to see. But it, what it tries to do is try to give you a feedback to see how the education is happening. Is it inclusive? Are the private schools and public schools having a similar education system? And what the country can do to improve its education? So it gives a very detailed report to the country. It gives a very detailed report to the schools. It gives a deeper report so on what parenting techniques work to improve the education. I think India also participated in this exam in 2009, yes. Yes. Uh, but uh, of course the performance was really not that great. True. I think uh, we as Indians stood uh, in 72nd position out of the 73 countries that participated. Yes. Yes. So uh, could you please elaborate on this? I, I mean, as Indians, we have this mindset that we are good in math, we are good in science, yeah. but what, what went wrong in this exam? It's just the way we took it. Yeah. The, uh, you know, we took it saying that we are not ready for the exam. So, in fact, Brazil, which is, you know, uh, took this exam as well, came last. But what they did was they kept on taking it. Okay. And Brazil said the goal was by 2021, it wants to be above the average. Now, because it took on at its goals, it wants to keep on doing it. It had a growth mindset. I want to grow. Germany had the same thing. Germany, it was the worst country performance in OECD, right? But the attitude was that we will keep on improving. India also is, wants to keep on improving, but said we were not ready for this kind of you know, approach. But then you should understand what people ask me, right? Why is it so important? The answer is, why is education important? <laughs> now, there are lots of reasons on why is education so important. Ken Robbins has got lots of video on why. But the way now I see it is, for example, education, let's say look at where the educated people are going. Bangalore, Bombay, you know, New York, anywhere. That's the place that's very financially, economically wealthier. Correct. So you go to a village and you see less educated people. The village is actually poor. So parents who are listening to this, you need we educate our children with the notion that we want them to be more economically better than we have. And no parent educates saying that I, I don't care what the economical status of my children is, but we want them to be at least maintain the wealth you have or at least grow the wealth that you are economically well off. So education, one goal of education is to improve the wealth of the country, of the family, of the city. So if we improve the wealth in our country, unless you have a country that's got a lot of raw materials like oil or something like that, <laughs> if you depend on your human resources, improving the education improves the wealth in the country. Yes. Very so true, that's very the true. perspective of China. China is doing really well financially right now. Singapore, it's got no other resources than human resources. So it spent a lot of money on on its education. Yes. So you can see the per capital income is very high. Yes. Like you told, I, the key takeaway from whatever you told right now was yes, a lot of parents want their children to be in a better economic conditions that they were in or they were born into. Yes. So that is the prime, I mean, one of the primary goals of education yes. for a lot of parents. Or yes. That's why even from lower class yes. to middle class to upper middle class, lower middle class, everybody has something called as education fund. Yes. Anything else apart, they will save a lot of money for the yes. child's or children's education. Yes. So even for them, it would be a very good metric to understand. Yes. where their money is actually going in terms of education yeah. and I think PISA put the, gives this perspective and puts things in place is what I also feel yes. wherein a student's memory techniques or other things is not tested yes. they sort of give you some uh, I mean for that age group at, at their level they uh, introduce you to real life problems or real life scenarios mm -hmm. wherein you need to comprehend the question in the first place yes. infer the right answer out of it and then probably arrive at the solution Absolutely. so a lot of Indians like I asked you the question why, why probably Indians did not fare that well in the exam probably we maybe are, we are good at numbers right but when the same question is given in a verbal format yeah. we are like we don't want to read this and arrive at the solution yes and I think that is something that PISA also tests uh, the students upon, right? Yeah. So there is a, uh, the other thing I was uh, just thinking is it helps a country also understand 
uh, where they are actually lagging in terms of if there is a huge disparity in terms of the performance of the government schools or the public schools and the private schools yes. it is a strong red flag for the government to understand that the education needs yes. to be given proper importance in both the sectors yes. and I think as a country you are also trying to build a nation and it has to be on the uh, basis or roots with education at the base yeah. so I think if you are aiming at that understanding as a country for you to understand where you lie, what's our weakness and building on that and reducing that disparity between the private and the public education sector, yes. I think that is the key. Actually, uh, what are we trying to educate our children for? For life, right? So, PISA doesn't say this, this problem is from algebra, this problem is from, you know, light or... See, even an exam like JE, even an exam like NEET, says I'm going to give 70% or 80% problem from the NCRT. It's telling you where the problems are going to yes, come from. Yes, very true. But PISA doesn't do that. It says you've learned these concepts. Can you use those concepts to like problems? Right. And then it tries to see can you infer. So you could probably give a text and says can you infer this is the problem and can I use what I've learned in any subject and figure out a solution for this. Yes. That is a life problem, right? Get it. I worked in in oil field in a technology number one technology company in the oil field, the Slumgee, right? And with my 15 years of career, I have used only math and science that was related to high school, 11th and 12th. <laughs> I tell you, only people that used engineering level math or masters level math. I did my masters as well. Were the people who were in research, right? But pretty much, even though I did my engineering job, I didn't. I was in the engineering field. I used high school math or 11th and 12th math. See, from what I have uh, seen, in 2000, India, uh, mm. 2009 when India had participated and performed really poorly, yes. there were some corrections put in place to ensure that the whole education curriculum also gets better towards preparing well for this PISA exam. Yes. In turn for PISA exam, but overall in terms of improving the education system. Yeah. So I think with their, that sort of elaborate reports, even the schools can understand. See, today we live in a yes. world which is actually becoming smaller. Rather, the globalization is in, going in a very big scale. Yeah. Today, as a country, we also need to understand that that our education systems yes. or the citizens that we are developing through education yeah. are at par with the global standards of the first world or developed countries let's call that so yes uh, we need to understand that as a country as a growing country with uh, such a huge population yes. we need to put proper forces and changes in place to ensure that we are at par with this um, developed countries working well. towards that yes 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 and i think uh, there is good amount of changes coming in yeah. because uh, even india right now like you told after 2009 they had taken a backseat telling that we are not ready for this sort of an exam we need some time and i think finally now they have made sandigarh the representation uh, representative of india yes, yes. and uh, all the schools there have built or are preparing yes. the students towards preparing well for this yes. exam and they're going to attempt this exam as well but i think the next version is uh, next uh, Installment of that exam is going to be done in 2024, yeah. if I'm not wrong. And I think the whole country is getting towards that. So even the NEP that has come, Gaurish, is trying to change the uh, education in the country. Yes. So it is the country on its own is trying to make a lot of changes so that it gears up and improves the you know, education in the country. NEP is one of them. Yes. But there are in the background, there are a lot of agencies working for the government to yes. improve education throughout. Yes, yes. People should understand that. And people should be on board with right. those changes. Exactly. And uh, at CFL also, we are trying to bring this change within yeah. the country and we feel responsible for our country and the students yeah. studying here. So could you elaborate a bit on uh, the PISA exam that we are also conducting? Or a version of it rather. <laughs> so, so, so we probably will have a similar paper all throughout the grades, right? So, and people might ask me, uh, parents might ask me, why are you giving it for grade seven? Yes. It's, it's for a... Or grade five rather. Grade five rather. <laughs> So, India right now is giving only to Chandigarh in 2021. But we know 2024, three years down the line, it's going to come. And much more cities are going to be ready for it. Yes. Or much more cities have to take it. Yes. So, we want the schools, we want the regions of the country which are going to take part in it, start preparing to understand. If you have to improve, you need to where you are. Yes. How, how can you improve if you don't know where you are? Yes. Yes. So, we are going to give you some help on to know where you are. Yes. 
and what you can do to improve right right i think most of the schools also would benefit out of this because here the schools basically uh, feel that okay i mean uh, i wouldn't blame them also most of the schools i've seen are happy or content with one of the top results that they get but yeah. as a school it is their whole and sole responsibility to Everyone. ensure that the every every student has is a part of that upbringing of education yes. and the economical growth of the nation yes. and i think uh, since the pisa exam uh, that uh, cfl is organizing on december 19th is going to come out with this elaborate reports for every school yes. give a elaborate and a very meticulously detailed report to the schools wherein the uh, the schools understand where they are lagging and what sort of uh, changes that they could bring in to alter the course to ensure that they are on the right direction yes. i think uh, also uh, the exam would be probably uh, aimed at ensuring that it is not only about math and science in terms of equations and numbers it is also towards and making sure that they understand the uh, comprehension uh, part or the inference part from the passages that are there in front of them so one of the thing is you can understand is that financial literacy is one of the part of the exam oh okay so it might be a math question but they're checking financial literacy as well wow so that was introduced in 2015 okay so in even our paper financial literacy is going to be you know i think everybody should be financially literate <laughs> you know so that's very nice that's very nice so, and uh, the aim of the exam is that uh, just to give you a few details about the exam uh, it is going to be a one and a half hour paper 90 minutes which will have 18 questions which means per question you will have 5 minutes the whole purpose of this is they need to the students need to read the question understand the question draw the proper variables and inputs from the question and then solve the question hence we will be giving 5 minutes per question and it is going to be a purely online exam on uh, december 19th which is free of cost all you have to do is Uh, log on to the website www.cflindia.com and you can click on the first link there which leads you to the pisa test you can register yourself and there will be mock tests put up there for you to practice and understand rather get acclimatized to the pattern of the paper although it might seem a bit daunting at the beginning but it is for the greater good and if you answer these sort of papers um, all the other things fall in place that is the whole purpose of this exam and uh, the actual exam is going to be on december 19th which is a sunday of course and uh, it will be uh, an exam that you can write or attempt from the comforts of your home since it is an online exam and uh, you could elaborate on the prizes what we have kept i think i wish you the right person <laughs> <laughs> so the prizes uh, we have kept very fancy prizes and exciting prizes like ipads samsung tabs and cash prizes uh, the only reason for us to do this is we want our country students to gear up for this exam which is in 2024 like which i told uh, a lot of students are today in grade 7 or grade 6 who will be actually taking this exam up throughout the country in 2024 or 2025 so we want our students we want india to perform better on a very uh, very uh, On, on a global scale in a very very pleasing way for everyone and hence we have come out with these kind of prizes and also along with the school reports for the schools we will be giving prizes for the schools as well and uh, we are doing this to ensure that we encourage the schools the parents and the students to go ahead with taking this exam so i wish uh, all the students all the best and uh, i request kindly request all the schools parents whoever is watching this to kindly encourage your students to register for this exam and uh, ensure that as a collective group we bring up the economical condition and the health of the country thank you thank you vijay